Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. I got a question for you. What happens if you have an engine family that the aftermarket just doesn't support? What if there are no parts for it? Well, the answer is easy. Make it yourself. In this video, we're going to take a look at a custom intake manifold that I designed for the 4.6 liter three valve motor. And for those of you guys interested, by the way, it is not available. I never produced it for sale. I was thinking about it, but it never happened. This particular intake manifold doesn't exist anymore. So even the prototype is no longer available. What I wanted to show in this test was something very important and something we've shown on other engine applications. The intake manifold, the design of the intake actually determines the effective operating range of the motor. And it does this both NA and under boost. So to prove that, I've got dyno data. Let's check it out. If you take a look back at part one, show you some modifications that we did on a 4.6 liter three valve, including running a supercharger on it. And all of that stuff worked out very well. I've got some more testing here. And this one was on an intake manifold that I designed that we did a bunch of testing on, both naturally aspirated and supercharged. This was a different motor. This was a junkyard motor. But because we had already run one of them, we knew that we could run another one. Oddly enough, this one didn't seem to make quite as much power as the previous one. And again, you know, the difference can be wrecking yard stuff. This was closer to 350 horsepower and 350 foot pounds of torque. The cool thing is we started this out, I wanted to find out how much uh, power the stock air intake was worth. Normally when we run these, like when we did the previous video, we run those, we run them with an, an open throttle body or sometimes an open throttle body and then a radius air intake going into the throttle body just to try to maximize the flow. But because obviously in the vehicle, all of these things have stock air intake. So I wanted to find out what was being lost by the stock air intake and not with the factory mass air meter because we don't run that running this with the uh, fast xfi management system it's a speed density system so we don't rely on the mass air meter i didn't want that to be part of the equation i just wanted to see what the change in flow rate was between the open throttle body and having the stock air air intake system hooked up so here here was the test we ran this thing again with the fast we ran it with larger injectors these are 65 pound injectors because we would eventually be running boost on this after we compared it naturally aspirated to the modified intake manifold. Everything else was stock on the motor. We could not, because we were running the fast, we could not control variable cam timing, which would definitely help the low speed power and stuff. But run in this manner, 350 horsepower, 300, 340, Let's see. Yeah, 350 horsepower, 349 foot-pounds of torque. That's with the open throttle body. And here's what happened when we put the complete factory air intake on there. The Everything from the factory air box and filter all the way up to the inlet tube, including the mass air meter. Here is what happened when we ran the factory air intake. You can see it did lose quite a bit of power. Um, I would... Uh, just eliminate this the section down here between 3,000 and 3,500. There's no way that the air intake could do that. I'm thinking that there had to have been a change in cam timing or something else that happened down there. But we can see that, and this is kind of what we would expect from an air intake change, is the more restrictive it becomes, the, the gains or the losses in this case from the restrictive air intake become greater and greater as we go up in engine speed, which is kind of typical. Same thing with the, if the throttle body is restrictive, we see the same thing. The gains that you get from a bigger throttle body on an application tend to increase. And so we're seeing exactly the same thing here, but we got a difference of about 13 or 14 horsepower between running this factory air intake setup and running just an open throttle body. Now, obviously you can't run an open throttle body in the car, but it shows that there is power to be had from a good air intake system upgrade over the factory stuff. So now let's get to our test on the intake manifold. Now that we've taken a look at the effect of the factory air intake, we can get to the intake manifold and go ahead and show you a photo here what the intake manifold looked like. And as you can see, it's basically a three valve version of the old GT40 style intake manifold, if you will. Kind of looks like that using tubes. We use, I use two inch tubing and the you know, it was a compromise getting the bends the right length. We obviously had, because this is a, a an oval kind of opening, we basically just smashed the ends down on the tube so that it would transition from the round tube. The tubes were not tapered in any way. They were a, you know, fixed diameter all the way through. 
the inlets going in from the throttle body into the common plenum, which was down in the V of the motor, were two and a half inches, if I remember right. And I, I remember, which is 63 uh, and a half millimeters, I think. And the intake manifold flowed quite a bit more than the throttle body did. So we knew that that wasn't limiting the inlet side. That was about as big a tubing as I could fit, given the constraints of the design fitting this thing, you know, under the hood. And you can see we had all the provisions for the factory fittings and everything, because we actually ran this in a vehicle and not just on the engine dyno. But we did the initial testing on the dyno. You can take a look here. Here's a photo of the initial prototype. And what I do typically is build a prototype with adjustable runners to find out what combination works best for, you know, what you're looking for, the best average power production. So we ended up working uh, from this prototype design to this design that would eventually work inside the car and run around and drive in this one. Actually, we did, we put a lot of miles actually on the vehicle with this in there. Um, the system worked very well and I'll go ahead and show you the power results here. And you can see the the photo from inside the car in, in the engine bay. It hooked up to the factory air intake and everything. All the factory lines and stuff, all, all, all of that worked, you know, it was designed to work basically a replacement for the for the factory intake manifold. I built another one. You can see here is a photo for the 462 valve. This was a non-PI version when I was trying to get 300 wheel horsepower out of a project I did for the guys at Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards back in the day. We wanted to do it using a non-PI setup instead of a PI motor, which would have been a lot easier because the heads are much better. But we had to kind of throw the kitchen sink at it. We put cams in it and ported heads. And I eventually had to just make my own intake manifold because we couldn't get something that made enough power to get us to that 300 horsepower at the tire mark. And this intake manifold eventually did. And you can see this one has a much bigger inlet uh, size than the three valve did because it had a dual split. So here's what happened when we were running this thing on the engine dyno. You can see the long runner intake had a dramatic effect on low speed power. Actually from 55 or 5600 on out, the factory intake made a little bit more power. Um, in terms of peak, 347.6, 348 horsepower versus 350. But if you're going to rev the motor out, the factory intake was up a little bit by, you know, at 6000 RPM. It was up by six or seven horsepower. But if you look down low, you can see that down here at 4,000 or 4,100, we had a difference of 332 foot-pounds for the factory intake versus 378 foot-pounds. So the thing that was really cool about this intake manifold is that all of this extra torque down low really, <laughs> really felt good. I mean, it really made the car one, you know, if you wanted to spin the tires, this was the way to do it. Um, and the thing seemed to work a little bit differently once we added the variable cam timing in the car, because that's one nice thing about variable cam timing is it changes the initiation point of the reflected wave. So it effectively changes the kind of the design of the intake manifold. But these are the results that we got from running this thing on the engine dyno naturally aspirated. So now let's take a look and see when we ran this thing with boost, if we still held, held true, does this same kind of difference still work? under boost. After comparing the factory 4.6 liter three valve intake to the new Super Richie <laughs> double throwdown tubular intake, uh, naturally aspirated, it was time to compare it basically under boost to see if the same thing continued to happen. Would we see the same trends or does boost basically, does everything work under boost and the intake manifold kind of doesn't matter? And hopefully if you've been watching this channel, you already know the answer to this, but we ran the combination with a Vortex supercharger. This was, uh, I think, an SI trim, and we ran it with a 3.8 inch blower pulley and ran it on a combination of 91 and 100 octane pump gas. And I think we had 22 or 23 degrees of total timing on this thing out at the top. Here is what happened when we ran the supercharger. It made 505 horsepower and 460 foot-pounds of torque. You can see 
it's, you know, it's kind of has a rising boost curve, which we come to expect from the centrifugal supercharger. And on the Vortec, for instance, this thing started out at 2.4 pounds down at 3,400 and rose to a peak of 9.1 pounds with that pulley combination. Again, the supercharger designed to run with no sort of intercooler or anything. It was just a blower blowing into the factory throttle body. Here's what happened when we added the modified intake manifold, replaced the stock intake manifold with the tubular manifold. And you can see it did a similar thing compared to what it did NA. Remember, we had big gains in torque down low. And I, I want to point out that here at 40 or 3900 RPM, the factory intake seemed to drop torque a lot. I don't think that that's indicative of what actually happened. I think that something else changed there. And when I went back and looked at the air fuel and the air fuel seemed good, I'm guessing that that might have been the cam moving or something. We don't, we didn't move it because we don't have the ability to do that, but I've never seen that happen. So even if we disregard that part of the curve and look at the area where we were looking at on the NA version, we see that at 41 or 4200 RPM, we're looking at 380 foot pounds at 4100 with a stock intake and 450 three foot pounds with the modified intake. So what we're seeing here is the same thing is happening under boost that happened with this motor NA. The longer runner intake manifold and the different design obviously was designed to enhance torque production and it did that naturally aspirated and it also did that under boost. The presence of boost doesn't negate the reflected waves that determine where this, where this particular intake manifold is going to be efficient. It's the same whether we add a supercharger to it or a turbo to it. It doesn't matter. Uh, adding boost only basically has this thing make more power. And in this case, it did make more power and more torque. It made 512 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 484 foot-pounds. But even down here at 4,300, we had 475 foot-pounds. So it's had this nice little kind of torque plateau with this long runner intake. And interestingly enough, on the supercharged combination out here at the top where it, where it lost a little bit of power compared to the factory intake, when we added boost, it didn't do that. And I can't tell you that maybe there isn't something there, a little bit more there to be tuned out of this with the factory one. I would suspect that the same thing would happen uh, with this manifold under boost that happened with the NA combination. But this is, this is what happened. I wasn't doing the tuning on this and all this testing was done, you know, a, a decade or more back. So um, I, 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 when we did this testing, I was really looking for like the big picture kind of thing. What I wanted to show was that this manifold worked and did a specific thing naturally aspirated. And then once we added boost to this, the same blower, the same pulley and the same air fuel and the same timing, that it did the same thing under boost basically in the long runner manifold and this particular design enhanced torque production NA and it also enhanced torque production under boost. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway from this video comparing this super custom intake manifold to the factory intake manifold on a 4.6 liter three valve? Well, it shows a couple of things. First of all, it's probably not a good idea <laughs> to go and build your own intake manifold unless you're really dedicated and want to spend the time and energy and expense to get it done and have something you've done yourself. Then that's kind of awesome. But in this case, for me, it was just a very expensive, time-consuming procedure for me to demonstrate demonstrate what we kind of already knew and have demonstrated a number of other times on a lot of other engine families and using intake manifolds that were already readily available from the aftermarket. It demonstrated that when you have a long runner intake manifold and the design enhances torque production lower in the RPM range, when it does that naturally aspirated, it obviously already, it also does that under boost. And it doesn't matter that it's a centrifugal supercharger or a turbo or a roots blower, if you could package all of that with a roots blower, which oftentimes is difficult, but boost does not change that. The manifold determines what the effective operating range of the motor is, and then it does that whether there's boost or not. Armature holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.